Oh, hi, Mia. Um, I don't have time to do a detailed written response, but video responses I can sometimes do quicker. This is one of those times. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch here. Uh, I haven't seen the study you're talking about, but just by the fact that you said it's a small study, small studies are good for showing that something might be an occurrence, okay? And hopefully that will trigger larger studies, and larger studies can, you know, more or less you know, either validate that the smaller study was was good or, you know, show that there was other variables in there that you can't identify. I'm going to address this, though, from a different issue. Um, I used to have a chart that I would use in my first day presentations, and it was showing uh, mortality rates for lung cancers, comparing current smokers to ex-smokers, and how, you know, the rates would drop, you know, over time, and how non-smokers, or how, um, people who quit would eventually get closer and closer to non-smokers and uh, you know it, it was a promising chart you know, how the rates drop but there was something troubling about that chart to people it was showing and this was from the American Cancer Society at that time who had produced it that people who had quit for one year or, or less they were actually dying of lung cancer more than people who were current smokers. And I had people look at that chart and say, oh my God, quitting smoking causes lung cancer. I mean, that's what the chart looks like it was saying. The chart was not saying that. What it was saying was people who had quit for one year or less were dying of lung cancer more, but the overall reason that that was probably happening was the reason those people quit smoking. A lot of those people quit smoking because they were told they had lung cancer. And all of a sudden they realized, oh my gosh, I better do something before smoking hurts me. And again, that's waiting too late. There's also a chance, though, there's some people who quit before they knew they had lung cancer. And I know this from clinic experience. I had a few people who came in, didn't know that they were they had cancer per se. They knew they weren't feeling well. They had attributed a lot of the problems they were having to smoking. I mean, they were coughing. They had, you know, chest pains. They had all these things. They just weren't diagnosed yet. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, they quit smoking and they do well. But then a number of months later, or sometimes it was a matter of a year or two later, all of a sudden, you know, they go in for a routine x ray and there was a cancer there. Now, there was a very good chance that these people had cancer in them the day they quit smoking and they didn't know it and yet in a way their body knew something was going on here and you know they they, they made a a good decision they they quit smoking i mean again they listened to a signal although they were doing it and again with the hope of preventing an illness that in a sense had likely started already again i would say that some of these people did have cancer did not know it and yet they, in a way, knew something was up. I don't think the majority of people that we encounter, you know, in a clinic or on a site are there because, you know, they had, they, their body is sending a signal they have cancer that they don't know about. Whether you have cancer or not, no one can answer that. That's something that, if you have the concern, go to your doctor, tell them that you have the concern. It's the type of thing doctors are, Often, when they're dealing with someone who is an active smoker, they're sometimes a little bit hard to deal with the doctor because they feel like they know what you need to do. You know, you, you need to quit smoking. That's the one thing that they know is going to reduce your risk the most, and people aren't going to listen sometimes. But um, once you quit smoking, they're often much more receptive because they realize you have taken an important step here and they want to often do what they can do to help you sustain that and if you have a concern of something like this if, if they feel that you know because of your pack years maybe because of other symptoms or stuff that uh, you know that it's warranted they, they can look they can do x-rays they can do more extensive if they feel that there's something that needs to be done uh, would I do it just because of this study? No, I, you know, that's not what I'm saying, not to do it because of one study showing, you know, that this is sometimes happening to people who quit smoking. But just, it doesn't hurt to get checked out if you have that concern. All right, I, I, I like I say, I'm kind of pressed for time here, but I, I just wanted to get a quick answer to you. Again, the most important thing that you can do and anyone can do to reduce their risk of getting cancer is to quit smoking. There's also a few articles that we have that illustrate the importance that even when people do have cancer, 
when they quit smoking, they have a much better chance of beating those cancers. So if it would turn out to be that worst case scenario that, oh my gosh, cancer was there, quitting smoking still gives that individual an edge as far as being able to tolerate the treatments that would be necessary and to survive that disease. So I'll try to attach those links in there too. Um, but you know, again, that's not saying you have it. There's, there's no way anyone online can tell you that. That's something that if you have that concern though, it's best to get checked out. Okay, uh, I hope that answers your question. And uh, I suspect John will look in and see if there's any other studies. John's much better at finding studies than I have lately. And uh, you know, basically, that's the way, to, again, to reduce your risk of developing a future cancer. If hopefully there isn't one year already, the way to reduce that risk is what you've done already, and that's making and now sticking to your personal commitment to never take another puff.